Um, unfortunately, we have a catastrophe here at the this Rondiani Junction Market, where uh, a trailer, which has now been established to be registered in uh, uh, Rwanda, with a Rwanda registration, with a Rwandese uh, driver and a turnboy, um, has uh, caused a crash. Uh, or has crashed on uh, people operating in the market here at Bondiani Junction. And unfortunately, uh, we have lost 49 people confirmed uh, as we speak. Based on the data collected by the SPT, which is combined with uh, the national government uh, team led by the county commissioner, the police team, uh, the Red Cross, uh, who have done a fantastic job, the medical team uh, from uh, both Nakuru and uh, Kericho, especially the Londiani Hospital. Uh, uh, and you know, uh, that confirmation of 49 and estimated between 30 and 32 to maybe 35 people could be in hospital. Um, unfortunately, we know also that some injured uh, people uh, might have gone home. <coughs> that is the information that is being established at the moment. Um, and uh, the Red Cross team and the medical team around here is on standby to provide medical uh, support to anybody who might have uh, thought that he is in good health or was not injured and went home and may have had uh, injuries that are not established. So uh, the cause of this uh, crash in terms of uh, the vehicle itself has not been established. We are going to carry out thorough investigations. The team of the traffic police is here. Uh, police related to uh, matters crime and investigation also here. We also have NTSA uh, here and uh, we are going to combine forces to make sure that all the data relating to uh, this vehicle is going to be uh, analyzed. Remember that this is a transit uh, vehicle. Um, it, is, it, was, it's a, it is assumed that it was, it was going to Rwanda. And um, so the uh, facts about this vehicle will not only end with uh, the data we collected on our roads, but also we need support of the neighboring countries to give us more information about the status of this vehicle. Um, this is terrible. Uh, you can't imagine that uh, there is a situation in the past where you, many people, apart from such a one, where people, many people who are not inside a particular vehicle have been lost in this number. Uh, this is huge and very painful to uh, imagine. And uh, I start by saying on behalf of myself, on behalf of my ministry, and on behalf of the government of Kenya, I send my utmost condolences to the families and friends of the lost ones uh, of the, uh, and the loved ones of those who we've lost in this very terrible crash. Um, the president, uh, his sister of what is happening here, is extremely concerned and um, he, he is going to also, uh, he has already made a statement in his uh, social media about uh, condolences to the, to the families. Uh, he is giving us uh, full support uh, as we even carry out investigations, but ultimately corrective measures so that we don't see these catastrophes in the, in the future. Um, as a ministry, recently I announced uh, directives related to uh, road safety, uh, which included retesting of uh, drivers. Uh, you know that when I announced these uh, measures, there were a few people who wanted to resist, uh, but we will stand firm as a ministry to make sure that all the drivers are tested, retested, and must be found competent. Uh, our, our intention is to make sure that ultimately all drivers in the Republic of Kenya or driving in our roads have valid medical certification so that we don't have situations in the future where I don't know what could have happened in this situation, but um, we want to make sure that everybody is tested 
uh, whether they are uh, medically sound to be able to operate in our roads. Uh, thirdly, the phenomena of uh, doing business along our roads is Kenya. And maybe not Kenya alone, but even if you go to East African countries, people are doing business along the roads. Um, market stalls, uh, hawking along the road. Um, this is not a peculiar to Londian. This is a problem that you can get it from all the way from Mombasa to Malabo. Um, as studies have been done before, uh, reports have been done before that uh, address this issue. And uh, the thinking is to make sure that the market is removed from the immediate road reserve. Um, that having been done in some places, like uh, you all know in the Muru, um, after uh, between the, the border between Nyandarwa and Kiambu, we used to have Sokomjinga around the corner there, uh, Kinale Forest, near Kinale Forest. Uh, when the market was moved uh, out, you know that some people moved to the market, others new and others who are operating there came back to the road. So, based on the uh, situation we have seen here, uh, my ministry, uh, already we are in consultation within the ministry with the NTSA, and uh, we will have to sit down on a multi-agency approach to make sure that we get all the markets along our roads out of the immediate road reserve. Uh, and that can only be possible if we partner with the county governments and the national government to provide markets uh, immediately or not very far from the road so that people who are selling their produce to uh, travelers can get the opportunity. We are ready as a ministry to provide access road. Yeah, We are ready to provide access road for the uh, markets to be moved out and for vehicles that are intended to buying uh, produce or goods along the uh, highway to have uh, entry and exit uh, to those markets. Uh, that, uh, that, that, that way we will uh, avoid such catastrophes. Um, uh, so in the shortest time possible, I don't want to uh, issue any directive out of knee-jerk reaction. Uh, based on the consultations we are going to make, the direction is to remove all, all, and I say without exception, all the markets from immediate road reserve. Because even if you see this road, there are, there are stalls, another almost one kilometer, you know, on the side of the road, you know, up to there. And as I said, I need to emphasize, this is not peculiar to Lundiani. Yeah, it is in, you know, the entire, if you go to Salama, if you go to uh, Taita Taveta, if you go to Mariakani, even up to uh, Mombasa, you will find the same, same phenomenon. It, it is something that has been with us for many, many years. Because, of course, roads are good because they attract business. You know, they bring travelers, they bring people who are... But we will do everything to ensure that um, rest facilities and, uh, and uh, market stalls are removed uh, from uh, uh, the road and provided for in strategic places along the road. Uh, considering the financial situation we are in as a country, uh, I believe this is a service that can be provided also through PPP. Uh, markets can be built and leased out by uh, private investors. We just need to identify and license them to run out those markets. Uh, restrooms and uh, resting facilities and places for, as already has been the case in um, in, uh, in, in, along our roads, even when you go to Kikope or you come uh, uh, to Gilgil or other parts of the road, uh, it's private sector that has built facilities for the lorries to be able to and, and, and roll, lorry drivers and trailer drivers to be able to uh, take a rest. So we're going to do that with uh, <coughs> support of the private sector. I know many Kenyans are wondering uh, these things must be done immediately. We have a financial situation to deal with. And the best way to resolve this issue is partnership. And that partnership between national county government and also the private sector will resolve this issue. <coughs> the, the message I want Kenyans to know is that pursuant to this accident, 
and uh, uh, considering the catastrophe that can occur along the uh, road from Mombasa to Malaba, from uh, Namanga to Nairobi and to Moyale and other places, we have to urgently work together and my ministry will provide the leadership on that issue to remove all the markets from the road reserve. Just imagine if there was nobody operating immediately along this road, the, that load would have failed here and uh, you know the situation would have been uh, mitigated. Maybe sadly what you know the driver or only one person could have been injured or two. But just imagine the situation we find ourselves as a result of this. Um, we just have to remove people from the road. I know Kenyans, and I have had uh, a lot of them saying that uh, um, our ministry should have averted uh, such accident. Um, we will we will do the investigation and thorough investigations to know what caused the accident. We will do a very thorough investigation, and once we do so, uh, we will take the necessary action. <coughs> but we need our support. That soon, when you hear us banning and tell Kenya we ban people from operating from all the re uh, road reserves, of course, we'll give people due notice. But if you hear us tell the road agency, and especially Kenya National Highway Authority, to reclaim its road reserve, and to make sure that nobody is operating immediately under the road, also let us re receive uh, your support. Because if you re we receive support of the people of Kenya, we will avert this situation. This is not a normal road accident. <coughs> you know, this is not the kind of normal road accident where you say the Matatu was unroadworthy, uh, the police uh, allowed unroadworthy vehicle to pass, or, you know, as people say, the car, you know, somebody was bribed, that's why enforcement was not done. This is not that kind of a normal uh, kind of an accident. This is actually a disaster that has occurred as a result of an accident that perhaps could not have been too catastrophic happening in an area where there is high operation of people. There is a rule even, there is a rule in the air, um, uh, in the aviation sector, that a plane cannot land or a, or a landing uh, near an airport should not have uh, high intensity uh, operation areas with factories and churches and all that operating with that area. Because people know if landing of a vehicle, of, a, of an aeroplane does not happen as it should, it, uh, at least we should avert catastrophe. We must apply that rule on our roads. We cannot have that number of people operating just next to uh, next to high traffic uh, and high risk vehicles flying our roads. I really need your support as the people of Kenya because I will take the bold step. Yeah, uh, uh, we, Some people will run for court orders. It's okay. I will also uh, uh, approach the same court and we need the support of, the, of our courts on those decisions. And also some people will, uh, will try to resist it. I, I, see, I see people saying they are not going to test for driver. Why? Why? Let's discuss, let's discuss the cost of testing. But you can't tell me, if you are a qualified driver, you can't tell me you are not going to take a test. Why? Because if you have been driving over 10 years, you are experienced. The test should be, you know, nothing. We, what we are going to do is to make sure that those drivers are not going to be tested in a language that makes it difficult for them to communicate. You can test in Kiswahili, you can test in whatever language you want to test, but we want to make sure that all the drivers that are on our roads have been tested. We are going to roll out also testing uh, of uh, motor, uh, uh, motor vehicles uh, inspection, and uh, we, we want to make sure that we roll out the motor vehicle inspection and the program is in place. We've already announced that the NTSA will make sure that the motor vehicles are all motor vehicles flying in our routes are also inspected. We must yes, partner sir. also under EAC to test uh, and inspect the vehicles that are international in nature. So we must find a way to make uh, yeah. <laughs> So, so the, the the point we are we are uh, trying to make here is that. When it comes to the motor vehicle inspection, we will need a big support from the East Africa community. This vehicle is Wandis. 
uh, the the responsibility of of its roadworthiness is not in our country. By East African laws, its roadworthiness is determined by the country of, of registration, which is Rwanda in this case. So we will need also support of our East Africa community partners when we roll out the uh, motor vehicle inspection to determine their roadworthiness. I thank you very much. Unless there's someone who has a question, I appreciate you for your time and thank you for reporting. First, it will be very sad for me to conclude without saying this, that I want to thank uh, the medical team that assisted, the emergency medical team that came here from the hospitals here and the hospitals in, in both Kericho and uh, Nakuru County. I want to thank the Red Cross for their selfless sacrifice in every disaster that has happened in this country, including this one. I want to thank the national government agencies, the county commissioners, the police, the national uh, transport uh, authority, uh, safety authority uh, from my ministry, that is NTSA. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank Kenna uh, for their response. I want to thank the uh, governors of both counties. Uh, Governor Susan was in continuous consultation with us. And actually, when I called her, she acted and got us a friend who brought this crane that assisted also in the in the process. And uh, Governor of Kericho was here. I want to thank my friend here, Honorable Member of Parliament here and the MCA for actually being here throughout and uh, being among the first people to respond uh, and, and react to this situation. This kind of partnership is the only way we'll be able to resolve problems when we have such situations. And I thank the media for uh, consistent reporting and also responsible reporting uh, to make sure that we don't uh, you know, show bodies and you know all that. Uh, responsible reporting also is very important and also making sure that accurate reporting is also made. I appreciate the media for your responsibility on this matter. Thank you very much. I don't think